Welcome to The Heat Check. I am your host, JD Dyer. And this week, I'm joined by my guys, the hoop genius, Mo Moonsey, and the point guard guru and three-time NBA champion, BJ Armstrong. After the Christmas period, look, the league starts to build up towards All-Star Weekend. Cleveland, get ready for us. And the voting has already started as of Christmas Day. So we thought we'd see if our resident experts would give their opinions as who they think deserve the starting spots on this year's roster positions. So in a moment, we're going to flip to my guy, Mo Moon, who's going to tell us all about his starters in the West. But first of all, I need to know how the point guard guru feels about his All-Star starters when it comes down to the East Coast. So BJ... I know, look, Mo hasn't seen your all-time starting five in terms of this year's all-star starters, sorry, excuse me. But you break it down to me, yeah? Who have you gone for as your starters for this year? My starters this year for the Eastern Conference is the following. From the Atlanta Hawks at the point guard position. Oh, I like it. Mr. Trey Young, 56 and 14 last night. Nothing else to say. At the two guard position, the marvelous DeRozan, <laughs> the Chicago Bulls assassin. You know, many people didn't think that was going to work, but DeMar is showing it. It's not only going to work. They are first in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. At three is an easy choice. We got Kevin Durant. That's the easy sniper. At four, we got the G, -G, 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 -G unit. Giannis. <laughs> <laughs> and at the five, we have Joel Embiid. That's my starting five. Get your tickets, get your popcorn. And as they said, Cleveland, we coming. We did it. We right. there. We right. there. I got a lot of time for that. I got a lot of time for that. BJ, look, I got to speak for some of the people, though. I loved it. I loved the introduction to everybody. As far as I'm concerned, I would get you on the announcing team to introduce this team down the East Coast. But what about some of the question marks? You speak about DeMar DeRozan there. No, no space for Zach Levine, who's just been as good. He might not have had those clutch moments, but Zach's definitely putting some buckets down. Well, in the, West, in the Western Conference, we have the Splash Brothers, mm -hmm. okay? Now in the Eastern Conference, in Chicago, we got the Slash Brothers, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. So we're giving Zach Levine love. He deserves to be an all-star, but right now I got to give the people what they want. They want to see Trey Young. They want to see the master at work. So let's get it. What about the master of the step back, BJ? I mean, James Harden is, let's say he struggled in the beginning because he wasn't getting those free throw fouls. But since the league officials got that letter from the Brooklyn Nets, I'm telling you now, James Harden's 22, 9 and 8. I mean, that's good in anybody's books. Oh, yeah, we, we love James Harden. We know what James Harden's capable of doing. But right now, I don't think he's outplayed through the course of the season. Right? He's played well recently, but the course of the season and his body of work this season, without question, DeMar DeRozan has been hands down the best two guard in the Eastern Conference. All right, my last question mark to you, B. I, I, lo I love what they do in the MIA. Yeah, you know me already. If you can get me down to the 305 any time of the year, I'm there. And the heartbeat of that, some people would say it's Kyle Lowry, but I still will always say it's Jimmy Butler. No question marks, no space for Jimmy Butler in your starting five. No, 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 not this year. Jimmy Butler has had health issues. He just recently got hurt last night in the um, Golden State game, and I, hopefully he, he'll have a speedy recovery. But not this year with Jimmy Butler. We know Jimmy Butler. We know he's capable of doing a very clutch player. But this year, this has been DeMar DeRozan. He's having a career year, guys, and DeMar DeRozan deserves to be the starter in this year's All-Star game. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm just impressed that there's a center in there. And there's actually, I can see the pieces. I can see a three. I can see a four. I can see two legitimate guards. Mo, you turn around and tell me, how you feeling that in the West? It's going to be difficult to match up against that. But I feel oh, like your team might have something. In the Western Conference, man, listen, the Western Conference is always stacked. And we've got to start at number one at a point. We're going to go with Ja Morant mm. because the Memphis Grizzlies point guard has been on fire. You've seen what he's been doing in this recent stretch of form. He's been going off completely. And then at the two guard, BJ always talks about Steph Curry not being a true point guard. So let's play him at a two. Let him be off the ball, <laughs> run off some screens, splash some threes, Steph Curry, MVP candidate. No, three, we're gonna go with LeBron James. How could you not? How could you have an all-star team and not have LeBron James at the age of 37, belated happy birthday to LeBron, Fact. still doing what he does best, and that is dominating when he's on the court. And then, maybe this one is a little bit of a surprise to some people. I've got Draymond Green at the four, but I want to reward winning. I want to reward defense. I want to reward 
the dogs in this league. Facts. Because Draymond represents that. He's the embodiment of hustle, hard work. And he deserves to be on this NBA All-Star roster because he's led the Golden State Warriors to the best defense in the NBA, the best record in the NBA. And then, of course, the reigning MVP, Nikola Jokic. Devin Nuggets have been hit hard by injuries, but Jokic is keeping them afloat. Got them playing at a 500 level, putting up historically great advanced stats if that's what you're into. But more than anything, his passing ability, his behind the heads, his no looks, his operating from the elbow. Just imagine Jokic throwing lobs to LeBron James or, you know, like all these pieces around him. He's doing it with the Denver Nuggets. Imagine when he's got an all-star team around him. I mean, I'm liking the clutch link-up right there. I'm just, first of all, can we just give you applause? Because Draymond Green definitely does this. Not everything is about numbers. Yeah, the, the hustle, impact the ability, over numbers. the impact on the game. Draymond Green is up there right now in the league. But I've got some question marks. Look, you know where you were. The European contingent is going to be like, excuse me, did you forget about Luka? Where's the question mark there? I didn't forget about Luka Doncic. Talk to me. Now, I know we give Luka Doncic a lot of love on this show. But the other thing that we do right here is we keep it real all the way through. The Dallas Mavericks, in particular, you know, with, with Luka Doncic, they've not improved since last year. More to the fact that sometimes they play better basketball when he's on the bench. And I'm not saying he's not the best player on the team because he is by a clear stretch. Mm -hmm. But there have been question marks over Luka's fitness this season, how he came into the season kind of out of shape, the same way James Harden did over in Houston, but he's kind of playing himself into shape a little bit. So for Luka Doncic, he may make it as a reserve, but I've not seen the same Luka magic that we have in previous seasons to the same level. I've seen him getting a lot of touches, getting a lot of the ball in his hands, but I feel like the guys that I've selected are just a tiny bit more deserving. Sometimes I feel like you're almost unfortunate when, and I'm going to quote BJ Armstrong right here, you're the best team in the NBA, in the Phoenix Suns. And because you're a good team, you can sometimes forget and neglect individuals. Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, not in your starting? Devin Booker, more to the point. I mean, I didn't if even get to D-Book. If he there was, was going to be one of them, it would be D-Book. But, you know, you're completely right. It is about a team game. But having said that, even when you are a great team like the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry still stands out from everyone else, despite it being a great team. And Draymond Green still stands out with his passing ability and his defense and his basketball IQ. Now, I'm not saying Chris Paul and those guys don't have that. I'm just saying they're not the Warriors. Okay. You know, maybe if they had done a madness on Christmas Day, <laughs> this conversation would be going a little bit differently. But all I'm saying is I'm rocking with them boys from the Bay Area. OK, I like that. Look, you know, I've always got people down in the Bay, so we're always going to be rocking with the Bay. But my question to both of you now is... Who's going to be the Kobe Bryant All-Star MVP? Because we know how it works now, which I think is a much better format, that the team captains can choose, of course, any one of these eight players in any which direction they want to go in, which is perfect. But who do you reckon will be the MVP when it's all said and done? This year, I'm going for King James. OK. Mm. Because mm. he's been trapped on this Lakers team where his teammates have been missing shot after shot after shot. When he's on the court with fellow All-Stars and he's getting assist after assist, dunking the ball, he can even hit those pull-up threes now. You know his trademark? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I like the it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. You know I what like I'm saying? It. Yeah. Listen, he's going to be in his element and he also knows that he's just turned 37. Now, I'm not saying he's going to retire anytime soon, but he's going to try and make the most of the opportunity. So I fully expect him to come out and try and win this All-Star MVP award. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. BJ. Mo thinks the King's going to go back to his actual home, yeah, and dominate in mm -hmm. Cleveland. Where are you, Tarman, in thinking that the MVP is going to go in terms of this All-Star game? I'm going right back to where they say, Brooklyn! We go hard. It's the Brooklyn way. <laughs> we go hard in Brooklyn, OK? I'm going with KD. I think KD has a lot to prove. And one of the things he has to prove is he is the best player in the league with his peers there. And I think that will, that will be a significant moment for him of all the things he's had had to battle over the last two years since since sustaining that Achilles injury. So I think KD had a great start in the in the summer with the Olympic team. Now he's playing well at an MVP caliber. He's not if he's not one, he's two on everyone's list. And I think the All Star Game will cement what he's really trying to do is I'm back, and he's going to put Brooklyn back in the game because right now with Kyrie's return, he has a chance really to win a championship this year. Oh, Kyrie's return. We're about to get into that right now, but you need to get in on the timeline. NBA.com, make sure you have your vote. The All-Star voting opportunities are now open. Yeah, I want to have your say. Make sure you tweet us. Let us know who you're voting for because we can't wait to see you down in Cleveland.